Okay, so uh, let's start today's lesson. Uh, so again, you can find the materials from the from the web pages. Uh, I was wondering if you have any questions about the exercise too. So let's do so that let's continue with the materials and and in the end of the lesson you can ask. Uh, did you have troubles with it? A little bit. Okay, but let's do so that we we go through them uh, at the end end of the lesson. So today we have plenty of stuff. Uh, to go through, uh, quite useful stuff. Uh, so in the beginning, uh, we will see how you can actually do geocoding. So how you can take addresses and and transform them into a point objects using specific tools in in Python, which is quite a kind of basic uh, GIS task that you need to do every now and then if you have addresses or if you have points and you want to find out the addresses. So there are some nice tools that you can use to actually do that kind of uh, uh, things. Uh, then the second topic is kind of we will start going through different kind of spatial or uh, spatial uh, queries. So we will see how you can do this kind of point and polygon query, for example, and then third topic kind of uh, continues on that and we will see how you can do a spatial join in Python which is really really common operation that you need to do if you are working with different uh, spatial data sets and you want to take some information from one data set into another so then spatial join might be something to consider. Then the final uh, topic is uh, also really commonly uh, needed so we will go through this kind of nearest neighbor analysis so if you have two point data sets how you can actually find out for one point uh, like from many uh, points which one of them is closest to your uh, origin point or destination point for example uh, in, in another layer so that's also quite useful in, in many cases so after this lesson, you should be uh, able to understand how these kind of things can be done in, in Python. But let's continue with the geocoding part. Uh, how many of you have needed to do these kind of geocoding stuff more than in one course that you have taken? Have you done it? Like, okay. So it's it's quite something that you need to might need to do also in some practical applications of your own every now and then. Uh, I have listed here uh, different kind of uh, uh, third party uh, geocoders. So there are a lot of different kind of geocoders available. So geocoder is this kind of service that can take uh, an address and it will basically find out where that address might be in the world and basically return a geometry uh, coordinates basically based on that address and quite many of them also uh, provide this kind of reverse uh, geocoding meaning that uh, you can put the coordinates inside and then get the address as a, as a uh, respond from, from those services. So quite many of you might have done these kind of things in ArcGIS, at least I did when I did some of the kind of basic courses in GIS. So you might have used the address locator tool in ArcGIS, uh, which is nice, uh, but there are also ArcGIS provides this kind of uh, service uh, on, online that you can use, but also many other uh, services are available, maybe something to uh, mention is for example this Google geocoding API uh, which is quite nice uh, it understands uh, well different kind of you can basically feed any kind of address into it and and quite often it it will find something for you is it the right one uh, that you need to maybe take care of and, and check 
but you can, for example, put some place names uh, there and it will find because Google has a lot of information available uh, from everywhere. So, for example, put the name of museum there and it will most probably find where it is located and so on. Uh, what we will use today is this uh, OpenStreetMap nominative, uh, which is nice because you can do these kind of uh, geocoding requests to that service without the need to actually get this kind of uh, API keys. Uh, how many of you have used APIs for some purpose? Okay, a few of you. So quite often these kind of uh, online services uh, like APIs, so application uh, programming interfaces. So to get access to those and use those services, you need to kind of apply for uh, this kind of key uh, to, to use so that the, your kind of request will be linked to your account and so on. But this OpenStreetMap nominative is quite nice because you don't actually need to have those keys and you can do a small amount of these kind of uh, geocoding requests without any any this kind of account to OpenStreetMap uh, or similar. So we will do that. Actually, the, the rate limit, so quite typically these services are rate limited, meaning that you can do only a certain amount of requests per hour or per second. And, and with nominative, it's uh, one request per second, which is basically 3. 1,600 per hour, which is actually quite a lot. So you can, you can quite, uh, you can use it quite freely uh, for, for most most of the cases. Cool. Uh, but let's continue. Uh, so what I have here is that we have this kind of addresses text file, which include this kind of data. Uh, it doesn't show them too well. So here we have, so we have some kind of ID here and then we have some kind of addresses and we can see that most of them, well, all of them seem to be in, in Helsinki. Uh, but just by looking at those addresses doesn't maybe mean much. So it would be nice to actually see where those locations are located and see them on a map. So let's start by reading this data in and basically uh, geocoding these addresses uh, and what is nice is that we can actually do that directly in geopandas so there are uh, specific functions available that can be used to do this so let's start by first saving this so control s will get my addresses here i will do this uh, I think I have somewhere well it doesn't matter I create a folder here uh, close and I will save this to here so addresses.txt it's always good to take a look that it looks correct well it seems to be mm -hmm. geofy yeah. it's a it's a library okay well yeah we we can do that and install it later it should come with geopandas by default when when installing yeah uh, but we can check that later so let's continue so what we want to do now is indeed to read these addresses in, in pandas so i say that fb equals to and then the full path of that file It 
is now in the game. So, infantry shield coding. So I save this file there. And indeed, now I want to read read the data. So to be able to read it, I need to import some modules such as pandas. And then, I thought we will be doing stuff with GeoPandas. I also import that one. So, let's run these things. And let's read the data. Uh, so, data equals CSV. And the separator in our file was semicolon, so I specify that the separator is that. And then when executing this, we got the addresses in the data frame. So this is something that you have done already many times. So how we can do geocoding? So we have this adr. Uh, column here and we want to use this uh, these texts here to actually uh, do the geocoding so before we can do any of those we actually need to import the geocoding functionality from uh, geopandas and how we can do that is that we say that from geopandas dot tools import Geocode. So Geopandas contains this kind of uh, sub module that has different kind of tools available. We will see a few of them during the course. Uh, and Geocode is one of them that we can use to do the geocoding. So, how we can uh, geocode these addresses? It's fairly simple. So, let's see, geocode the addresses so I will create a geodata frame called geo and how we can do the geocoding is that we call that geocode function here uh, and inside the parenthesis we it says that you should provide strings here and by default it will use the Google uh, API to do this, uh, but we won't use that because we would need to have a key uh, to access that service. But what we can pass here is that we said that I want to geocode from that data data frame the column adder ADDR, so address. And then other thing is that we want to change the provider. So instead of using the Google uh, API, we use the nominative uh, provider here. And basically this is all you need. And now you can start doing the geocoding. Uh, and it should, it takes a while. Uh, it might be that the, in GeoPandas, the kind of uh, speed that this does the geocoding is actually limited one request per second, which is how Nominatin basically recommends to do it. So as we have these 33 addresses here, it takes a while to actually do it. Uh, what can make it faster is that you basically could use the uh, GeoPy module to actually do those uh, uh, geocoding tasks yourself. There is a nice documentation available how you can do it. So it's almost as simple uh, as, as doing as we are doing it now. So you can take a look of the GeoPy uh, uh, documentation and, and find another ways of, of doing this. But now we are done, so the geocoding did its work, its work, and 
now we can see that what we cut out well maybe I take a head so we don't need to so as you saw so what I did here was that I created this geo uh, geodata frame with this geocode function and when we take a look at the data so it seems that what this function returned to us is indeed some kind of uh, data frame let's check what kind of data frame it is well it is a geodata frame so we have a geometry and then we have the actual address that that is basically returned by the nominative uh, service so this is not the the same address that you put into the service so it is actually a bit different this is the uh, address that the service found for you so for example we saw that one of the locations was geolocated to or geocoded to city center which is a building in in uh, in the city center and, and so on one seemed to be in Hesburger uh, which is uh, in Pyynemerenkatu and, and, and so on so indeed we got this geodata frame but as we have the data so this is the original addresses and this is the one that we got so now as you can see they are on different uh, geodata frames or different data frames and we of course uh, want to combine them together so we want to get the address uh, and the geometry information and the original data into the same data frame and how we can do that uh, actually we can join them together based on the index value because if we take a look like how many values are in the data and how many values are in the geo so they are same amount of values and actually the order stays the same so we can just join the data frames together based on the uh, index values and how we can do that is really simple so join the data frames together and now I want to join the data from uh, so this data data frame I want to take that and join it into this geo data frame because in that that way it is uh, uh, by by default as a geo data frame uh, in the beginning uh, so let's do so that geo equals to geo dot join data and this is all you need to do to get the information from the other data frame back to the uh, geo data frame and now we have the ID and we have the ADDR address so this is the one that we feed it into the service and this is what we got as a response so now we have all the information uh, needed to do the geocoding part and now we are basically well we can take a look uh, what do we have so we can of course plot the data and well it's quite small uh, but basically what we have here is these kind of points uh, across the Helsinki and actually well there are some some missing but what this for example might look like is actually the metro stations in, in Helsinki region so what these addresses were so there were the public transport stops uh, railway and, and metro stops in different parts of Helsinki and now we are basically ready uh, to save this into, a, into the computer so we can just specify what is the output file path so let's say that I will put it on the same location where the original data is so let's put it like that and well I call it addresses.shape 
so then just geode up to file and what I want to save is the dev address or the file path and now what we should have is indeed the addresses shape file in the folder so really really easy of course this was a example that I made sure that everything works so when you're uh, doing your own stuff with your own addresses so things might get a bit tricky uh, this nominative service for example uh, it's not maybe as easy going as as Google uh, with those so it's quite kind of like you need to be accurate with the addresses that you have for example always the the number of street and so on so of course for it to work well you need to provide the full uh, full address but Google might give you something even without any number so it assumes some some places and so on which might be good or might be bad depending a little bit of, of uh, what you are doing but that's basically how we can do that. Uh, yeah, so it seems that you don't, uh, there are many of you who doesn't have GeoPy installed, so we can, we can check those and install those. Uh, yeah, so that's the, maybe I just quickly, so so this is the command that you can use to I don't know if you can see it how you can install it so it should work hopefully yeah uh, but that's it for the geocoding part uh, do you have any Questions about it? It should be quite straightforward. Uh, yeah. Is there an error of uh, geocoder timed out? Geocoder timed out. Uh, did you specify that you use the nominative? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then there might be something with the internet access, which I doubt, or then the service is just, well, doesn't reply now. So you might want to try again it later or then well we can check out the code later there might be something so that's it so the next topic is uh, another really useful gis process and, and, and kind of analysis uh, called point in polygon and intersect so these are kind of queries that you need to do quite often if you have a certain amount of points for example in a data set and then you are interested in finding those points that are inside a certain polygon and continue to do the analysis only with those points so it's it's quite common gis task that you need to need to do every every now and then so in Shapely, there are basically these commands called uh, and, and functions called within and contains and, and already these uh, geometric objects can be used to actually do these kind of queries. So it is uh, quite straightforward. So let's continue uh, by going through these uh, point in polygon and, and these kind of spatial queries first in, in Shapely and then I will show you a practical example how you can use use this uh, in GeoPandas. Yeah, that is what I explained. So it will re re give you as a respond a different, it will give you the address that it found. And, and basically the join, if, if the uh, if the data frames are similar, you should be able to use the join, but we can take a look at that later in, during the break. So, uh, but let's continue with the 
point is polygon. I just And there's completely not geometry, so I import some modules and objects that we need. So point line string, for example, and then polygon. So we will work with those. Then I just save my script. Uh, Two goals. So here, as a tree, uh, pick point in polygon. So uh, let's see how we can do basic uh, this kind of uh, whipping queries, like point in polygon queries and, and intersect uh, queries that are quite uh, commonly needed. So let's just create a couple of, of, of point objects. So how we were able to create points is to use this shapely point object and then just feed some uh, coordinates inside there. So I just put some uh, finish uh, coordinates here. So there are some points in somewhere in Finland. So this is the point one. This is point two, so it should be somewhere else. So this follows the instructions. So something like this. So now we have couple of couple of points available. Execute these. Well, let's do this point two, not point one. So, when checking these out, we should have a couple of points, as you can see. Uh, then, let's create a, a polygon. And for this, I won't write all these but I will just copy and paste this from the, from the web so these are the coordinates that I will use to create the polygon and then let's just create the polygon by calling the polygon object and in inserting the coordinates inside there so now we should have a proper polygon that looks like this it seems to be maybe the senate square Helsinki looking at the shape of it and then how we can basically do uh, this kind of uh, check if point is within or which is inside a certain polygon so it's it's fairly easy to do so basically how we can do that is that we start by checking that and and start from the point object so let's check if the if the point one is inside the polygon so we can do that by saying point one dot and we have this function called within and basically then inside the uh, parenthesis we specified the geometry within what so basically within this polygon so ba this basically does that is it is this point one inside that polygon well it gives you as a result false so it seems to be that it's not in inside that one uh, let's check if the other one is it does well then you might have different coordinates in there or i might have a, a wrong ones maybe i Yeah, if you use contains. I use within too. I use within. Okay. 
Okay, well then it might be that I just have a different coordinates. Let's just copy and paste these so that they are they are exactly the same. Let's see what do I get now? Well indeed, now it's true. Well that's good that you know that. Uh, so the point one seemed to be inside. Uh, let's check about the other one. Yeah, it's false. So the first one indeed seemed to be inside and they're actually, as you can see from this uh, graph, there was one point inside there. So it seemed to be that point one that was inside the polygon. Uh, then uh, the other one function that you can use starting from the polygon point of view. So now we basically check if the point was within the polygon, but of course you can also check if the polygon contains a point. So let's check if the polygon contains a point. So that in a similar manner, we can say that the polygon, so the geometry contains, so we have that kind of function. And the other one is point one. Let's check if that is true. Well, indeed it is true and it should be as also this uh, call here was true. And the other one should be false if everything is correct and indeed it is false. So this way you can do basic uh, these kind of queries to check if certain geometries are inside a polygon uh, or if a polygon contains certain geometries. Uh, other things that you can find also useful is this intersect. And this is, intersect is quite uh, useful, especially when uh, when you want to check, for example, if certain line strings or line geometries are crossing each other and, and so on, or if, if certain line crosses a polygon border or this. So it's, it's quite common, uh, common this kind of geospatial operation that you might need to do every now and then. And it works quite in a similar manner. So let's, let's see how we can how we can do that. So let's also import a multi-line string as we had there. So I can just add here that multi-line string and then I execute. So we have that imported as well. So let's <coughs> see uh, and create a couple of lines. So I will just copy and paste these from the materials to my uh, spider. So we have this line A and line B and we can see that line A looks like that, line B looks like that. And now we can see and check if those lines uh, cross each other or not. So Let's first check if the line A intersect. Uh, if lines intersect each other. So line A dot, and again, you might maybe guess that there is a function for this. So line A dot intersect checks if the line A and line B basically uh, in the intersect each other and it seemed to be true as we can see here. Uh, we can also check if they touch each other. Jeez, uh, line B. Well, it's also true. 
So there is a slight change uh, or difference between intersect and touch. Uh, now I don't remember what was the actual difference, but there is some. Yeah. So it, yeah. So the nodes are touching each other, but but they are actually not intersecting. That might be the might, might be the uh, difference. There should be in the materials uh, explanation for that. Um, so that is true. Uh, then let's see what does how do these lines look when we combine them together so we can create this kind of multi line and basically create a multi line string and basically put these line a and line b as a into your same multi line string uh, geometric object and when we do that and check the output just by calling it we can see that it seems to be something like that. Uh, looks a bit actually strange, but anyway, they they are intersecting each other here. So, uh, so those are the kind of basic commands that are uh, running in the background. It's and it's good that you know that these are the basic. Uh, geometric or geospatial operations that can be used to do these things. Uh, of course, it's really uh, rare that you need to actually go and, and kind of do work using the actual uh, geometric objects because you can do these things uh, in GeoPandas. And next we will basically do a simple uh, practical example how we can work with uh, GeoPandas and do this kind of point in polygon uh, uh, analysis. So what we will use here uh, is that we have uh, this kind of KM, KML file which is also quite common uh, data type in, in GIS. It's a Google, some kind of Google standard uh, file and data type and we can read those kind of files into GeoPandas as well. Uh, it requires a bit of tricks because KML files are a bit problematic file types in that sense because they can contain for example videos and, and those kind of information and they can contain some uh, kind of nested uh, kind of structures inside there so it's bit tricky uh, data type in, in that sense because it's so flexible uh, but if you know that your KML file should be fine that it follows a basic structure with uh, geo uh, coordinates and, and then basically the attributes information uh, you should be able to uh, read it just fine with GeoPan. Uh, let's start by downloading a KML file okay so this is uh, basically openly available data from Helsinki Region InfoShare, which is really cool and nice site. How many of you have downloaded some data from? Yeah, so almost every one of you. So it's a really good and handy site to find open data from Helsinki Region. So you should check it out if you haven't haven't done it. So right click and and save link as so we can see that. There is this kind of KML file called PKS Sur Alue, uh, which is kind of these larger districts in Helsinki region. So that kind of file. So let's download that, and then basically, um, yeah. And what we are going to do is that we want to uh, check if those addresses that we geocoded earlier are inside one of these uh, polygons of, of that file that we just downloaded. So let's do so that we also read that addressee shape file that I just saved into the disk as well. So let's do so that I again create a new file. So 
keyboard geo pen as a QBD. Uh, what else do I need to do? Not maybe nothing else. So I just say the file path. So addresses file path equals to and I have this addresses shapefile here, so I just put the file path in there and just copy and paste this file name and add it here. And then I want to save this as well. So let's say L3 uh, tip geopandas, so pointing polygon in geopandas. And I save that. And the other file that I want to read are the KML files, so they are the polygons. So I say that polygon FP, so file path equals to this one. So again, copy and paste the directory folder and then copy and paste this. And then I should have those file paths ready. So first of all, let's basically just read the uh, points so the addresses so read files data equals to gbd dot read file and addresses fp so this should be straightforward to do I just run these once and now when checking the data well we have these points that we just saved and, and geocoded earlier so it should be familiar but then how we can read this kind of kml file so kml a kind of uh, data type is not enabled by default in in geopandas it can be read with with geopandas uh, such as many other data formats but we need to basically say to geopandas that allow uh, to read this data type. So first of all, what we need to do is to say the geopandas that uh, support this KML driver. So there are different kind of drivers that can read data from different data formats and one of them is KML. So let's say that I maybe add it here. Usually when you have this kind of configuration uh, kind of commands in your script you want to put them quite in the beginning of your script basically under the import statements that you have done so that you can basically right away see that there is some these kind of configurations done in the code so how we can specify that and, and say to geopandas that it can read the kml is that in this GPD, so GeoPandas, we have this kind of IO submodule, so in and out, basically, it's a kind of place where you can specify uh, how data can be read and uh, write, how it can be written. Then we have this file, so these are specifying that we are reading files instead of uh, databases. Here we have Fiona. I don't know how to pronounce it, Fiona or Fiona. But anyway, uh, this is a module basically that is actually behind all the read and write functions in GeoPandas. So as I have said earlier, uh, both Pandas and GeoPandas, they are actually bundling a lot of stuff inside them and, and kind of uh, building higher level tools for uh, for you to be easily you to use uh, in an easy manner so Fiona is one of them and in here uh, Fiona or Fiona we have uh, drivers and then we have this DRV so driver support so this is the place where we want to go and then basically here we have supported drivers so this is this kind of uh, Basic, basically a dictionary 
of of supported drivers in 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 geopandas and in fiona so here what we want to do is that we want to say that support kml and we want to add a value how we want to support it we want to support the read of that kind of file and write so r for reading and w for for writing and when executing this now we are able to actually read any kind of well not maybe any kind of kml files but at least the ones one that we have here there are also other data formats that needs to be enabled in a similar manner uh, maybe we can later check uh, what those are but not maybe now use time for that but they are as said tens of different kind of data formats that can be read and this is the place where you can actually specify and allow different kind of data formats if it's not uh, by default enabled yeah but then let's read this polygon fp so basically how i can read those polygons is that i now say that gbd read file so just in a sim similar manner as before but now i said that what i want to read is this polygon fp which is kml uh, but now i need to specify that what is the driver so what kind of file this is and as we specified here it is a kml file so in this manner we can read the data in and let's see if it works well at least we didn't get any errors and indeed now we have these polygons inside and they look correct it seems that we have a name here some description which is empty uh, and then we have the geometry as, as polygons and with some uh, elevation uh, information as well so this z uh, character is basically specifying that there is uh, elevation included cool so now we have the data uh, files read in uh, let's do so that what are what we are interested in here is that i want to know which one of those addresses uh, that we geocoded are located inside this Eteläinen, so southern district of of this Helsinki region and let's first do so that we select that area so select the southern district uh, how we can do that is simply by using this uh, dot x function that is should be quite familiar you have used it at least a couple of times so i want to say that the name so this is the uh, column name equals to and then i just spell uh, and write the eteläinen so in this way gave some warnings but we don't need to bother about that so now we should have this Eteläinen and polygon so southern district of, of this area in this variable uh, what we want to do now is that basically we have this index 10 here so we want to actually uh, reset the index so that it's number zero instead of uh, 10 so we can do that by southern dot reset index and by default it would basically store this original index value into a new column but we can say that drop equals to true which says that it doesn't create a new column because we don't need that for anything then we have this uh, parameter called in place how many of you have seen this in place or used it somewhere no okay uh it's nothing uh you don't need to use it what it is and you will you most likely will 
uh, uh, sooner or later seeing this kind of in-place parameter when you read the documents in in the web is that it basically says that now usually when you do stuff you set you specify that southern equals to southern and blah 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 what this in place parameter says that it will basically uh, update this same data frame that we are working on in place so we don't need to actually specify another time the southern uh, kind of variable when we are doing things but this will kind of uh, update the, the one that we have so now we should have the southern and it should be update, uh, updated and indeed it is so now the index value change so just that you know that this kind of uh, functionality is available uh, let's do so that let's plot these so that we understand better what we have here so let's say that import uh, matplotlib.iplot uh, as plt so this is the plotting library that we have used already before so let's import that and let's create a new figure and axis so how we can create a figure and axis is that we can call this uh, function called plt.subplots. So you use this already uh, in exercise seven in the last period when you did this kind of subplots. And this will just create an empty figure and, and so on. Uh, why we want to do this is that we want to plot these addresses and these southern district and those the whole uh, Helsinki region districts uh, on top of each other and basically create a simple map out of them. So for that purpose, we want to have this axe available so that we want, uh, can say that put them uh, one uh, on top of each other. So first of all, what we want to uh, plot is are those polygons that we have here so we can say that polygons plot uh, and what we want to now say that polygons plot and use this axe that we basically cut from here so we said that axe equals to axe and then we can say that I want those polygons to be gray in color so that's the first layer or the actually the the most uh, underneath layer of our map then what I want to do is that I want to plot the southern district which is here so the one that we selected so plot that on top of this uh, polygon layer so we just again say the southern dot plot and we use the same axis to where, where we plot this so this will be plotted on top of that one and then I want to say that this color should be red so we have gray and then red and then still uh, on top of these ones I want to plot the points that we have so let's say that data so those are the addresses that we have data dot plot uh, x equals to x let's say that the color should be blue and the marker size so what is the size of of those points should be uh, let's say five and now when we do this I run the whole script yes, yeah Um, yeah, let. Did you copy and paste the from the web? Yeah. So well, let's let's see a bit later. So what we got from here is uh, this kind of map. So now, as you can see, with the gray color, we have all the districts in in Helsinki region. 
Uh, with red color we have the selected one so we can see that this is the southern part of uh, of the region so this contains the city center of Helsinki for example and then on top of that we actually plotted those points with blue color uh, so this is a way how you can basically create this is not a beautiful map by any means but anyway you can just take a look what you have so this is how you can plot different layers on top of each other and the order of these is basically determined uh, which which is the order of, of your elements in there so the first one that you plot will be the one in the in the bottom and the next one on top of that and so on so quite easy things to do so what we are interested in here is to find out uh, this is a bigger map so we want to select those points that are inside this red polygon here so let's take a look how we can actually do that so this is really common operation that you need to do every now and then to kind of select those kind of values and, and, and uh, uh, features that uh, are within certain polygon uh, so let's continue uh, actually one thing that might actually be useful uh, in a similar manner as this was this kind of configuration uh, command I actually take it here uh, in shapely because now we are doing these shapely uh, spatial queries again so the, for example, the exercise two, there were the social media posts and there were some 80,000 of, of them. And I guess it was quite slow to actually do the geometries from those, if I'm right. Yeah. So how we, what can hopefully help a little bit is that there is the shapely dot speed ups, which actually uh, is basically speeding up the creation of these kind of uh, uh, points and so on because it uses uh, that kind of code that was written in C which is much faster than the pure Python code which is the the one that is default run by by uh, Shapely. Uh, so we can import that and then we want to enable it so we can say that Shapely speed ups dot enable so first you need to import that and then you need to enable it so those two things can be used to speed up uh, the uh, shapely functionalities a bit and let's then continue so what we want to do indeed was that we want to find out which one of those points are inside that uh, southern so this polygon here so that's basically uh, select points that fall inside the southern district polygon so how we can do that let's create a variable called point in polygon so pip is point in polygon uh, creation and then mask uh, will shortly tell you what that is but basically we can say that those data so the data included those uh, points as we can see so there are those points that are these blue ones here so let's say that data dot and then we have the exact the same uh, shapely functions available so we can say that data dot within and this basically will apply that within statement to all of the rows inside the geodata frame which makes it quite easy to do and then within what geometry so inside the parentheses here we want to have the geometric object 
that we are comparing it to. So what we want to do is that we want to take the southern dot lock. So we are actually extracting the exact the shapely geometry from there. So the southern at index zero and column geometry. So this is the actual geometry, uh, shapely geometry of, of that data frame here. So when we run this, so now we created this pip mask uh, variable and why I call it pip mask is that when we check what we got as an output is this kind of series of true and false. So any point that basically basically falls inside uh, this uh, southern uh, district is true and the other ones are false. And basically now we need to use this mask array to actually select those uh, those points that are true in, in this array. And that is really easy to do uh, just by let's say the point in polygon data equals to. So where we select the data, well it's that data data frame with, with the addresses, geolocated addresses. And then we just say that data dot lock and inside there we can specify the pip mask. And then when we run this, what we have as a result is a data frame, geodata frame with only those addresses and points that are inside that polygon. And we can take a look if that is correct. Well, actually, I will just show you the map. So basically what I do here is the same that I just plot these on one on top of each other. And these yellow ones here are basically the ones that we just uh, selected and created this kind of spatial query. So they, they are the ones inside that polygon. So should be quite straightforward things to do uh, as most of the stuff. Of course it requires some practicing but, but still 